Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now going to be answering question number four um, from the Solomon G. C1, old C1 papers, which is um, actually question number nine from my end of topic worksheet number three um, on equations and inequalities from P1. Um, and this question here is about, well, the first part is about quadratic curves, and um, the second part is basically involving inequalities and discriminants. So the first part of the question says, find in exact form the coordinates of the points where the curve y equals x squared minus 4x plus 2 crosses the x-axis. So we know that everywhere on the x-axis, y is equal to 0. Okay, on the x-axis, the y-coordinate of everything is 0. So when you want to find where something crosses the x-axis, you replace y with 0 in its equation. So when y equals 0, you have x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals 0. Now it says find in exact form. So that tells you basically that uh, your answers are going to be in third form. That's basically what they're trying to tell you in not so many words. So they're telling you basically don't try to factorize this because you won't be able to and you need to use either the quadratic formula or completing the square to solve this um, equation. So what I'm going to do as completing the square is very important. I'm going to use completing the square to find this. As we know, um, the quadratic formula is actually based upon or is derived from completing the square. If you complete the square for ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, you end up with the quadratic formula. So I'm going to do it by completing the square just to uh, get you some more practice of that. But you have to show one method. You cannot just write down the answers by using your calculator function for solving equations. If you just write the answers down, you won't get any marks for the question. You have to show the method. So either factorizing, which in this case is not possible, or completing the square or using the quadratic formula, one of those three methods must be shown if they can be used. So here, as I said, we can't factorize. We know that from even from the wording of the question. And if we even try and think of numbers that multiply to give you two and add to give you negative four, well, there's no such numbers. So we have to use um, completing the square or the formula. So to complete the square, what I like to do is I like to first just isolate the x squared and x terms on one side of the equation. So I subtract two the constant from both sides, then complete the square for this expression here. So I'm going to write a bracket, which is squared. It already says one x squared, so that's fine. So I'll put x, and then there's a minus sign, so I'll put minus, and then take half of this coefficient. That's gonna be two. Now, if I expanded this, I'm gonna get x squared minus four x plus four. Well, I don't want the plus four, so I'm gonna take away that four, and that gives you this. Now I can isolate the square bracket, x minus two squared equals, I'm gonna add four to both sides. So minus two plus four gives you two. Now I can take the square root of both sides. So x minus two, so if x minus two squared equals two, then x minus two could either be, and don't forget, either positive or negative the square root of two. Don't forget both of them, otherwise you'll lose. Uh, some solutions. You'll only get one, one x value. Here we're going to have two x values where you have x is equal to, if you add two to both sides, two plus or minus the square root of two. So we have two x um, values. We have when x equals when x equals two plus root two, we've got to find what y is. How do we find y? Well, we're going to start, well, of course it's going to be zero. All right, because we know that's when y equals zero. So we end up basically two plus root two, zero, and the other coordinate is two minus root two and zero. Those are the coordinates of the points. They want it in coordinate form and exact form. So they want them in this form here where you write them as coordinates. So it says find in exact form the coordinates of the points. So don't forget to write the y coordinate as well, even though it's zero. So there's the answer to that first part A of this question. Now we're going to move on to part B. And it says, find the value of the constant k for which the straight line y equals 2x plus k is a tangent to this curve. Now, there are two methods we can use, and I'm going to show you both of them um, in solving this equation or this problem. Now, one of the methods we can use is to say that if this line is a tangent to this curve, okay, um, like, for example, here you have a curve, a quadratic and here you have a straight line. Okay, if it's a tangent to the curve, 
then it will touch it at one place. Okay, it, will, it could have been that it could, have it could have cut it in two places, it won't meet it at all, or it touches it in one place. In this case, when it's a tangent, it means it touches it in one place. So that means the solution to this equation, when I, when I solve these two equations simultaneously, will, will only have one solution. It won't have two solutions. If it had two solutions, there would be, it would cut it in two places. If it has no solutions, it will, have, it will not meet the curve. But if it has one solution, it will be a tangent to the curve. So that's what we've got to take the case of, that you know, uh, when we solve these two equations simultaneously, then um, there will be only one solution. So what we're going to do, I'm going to substitute, okay, y equals 2x plus k into the equation y equals x squared minus 4x plus 2. I like to, I like to express it like this rather than say um, uh, equate them, okay, because sometimes you have an equation which involves y squareds in it, like x squared plus y squared equals something. And, you know, that doesn't really um, make sense when you talk about equating them. What, it, what you're doing is you're solving these two equations simultaneously by taking one of the equations and substituting it into the other. So what I can do is I can take this y here and replace it with x squared minus 4x plus 2. So I have x squared minus 4x plus 2 instead of this y. So y equals x squared minus 4x plus 2. Replace that y with that, and you get x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals 2x plus k. So this equation here should have one solution if the line is a this line is a uh, tangent to the curve. So to solve this, we're gonna um, it's like a quadratic. So to find the solutions for this, we have to bring everything to one side, makes it equal zero. So you have minus 4x minus 2x is minus 6x, and you have plus 2 minus k equals zero. So this equation, as y equals 2x plus k, is a tangent, okay, then that means the discriminant b squared minus 4ac has to equal 0. That was when there's only going to be one solution. Okay, so we have a is equal to 1, the coefficient of x squared, b is equal to negative 6, the coefficient of x, and C, the constant, is 2 minus K. So the discriminant B squared minus 4AC has to equal 0 if that is a tangent. So we can say B is minus 6. So we have minus 6 all squared. Minus 4 times 1 times 2 minus K. We know that equals 0. That gives us 36. We've got minus 4 times 2, which is minus 8. And minus 4 times minus K, which is plus 4K, equals 0. So 36 minus 8 that's going to give you how much? It's going to give you 28, right? 36 minus 8 is 28, plus 4k equals 0. So 4k is equal to negative 28. So k is equal to negative 28 over 4, which is minus 7. So that's the value of k for which this will be a tangent to the curve. Okay, that's method one. That's one way of solving it. Okay, that's one way. Another way of solving it is something which, by the time we've done this type of, uh, when we've, by the time we've done this question, um, at that point, when you just finished chapter three, we wouldn't have learnt this particular method, part the second method, but by the time we finished P1, we would know this other method to solve this question. So I'll go through this other method as well. For those of you who are watching this video at a point where you haven't gone through chapter eight of P1, then you can come back to this some other time. If you want to understand what I'm saying, if you haven't done, uh, you know, this topic of differentiation, right? Those of you who have already completed chapter eight, you should understand what I'm going to be saying now. If you haven't done differentiation, then this is the way. Method one is the way to solve this problem. Uh, that involves everything we learn up to chapter three. From this next method involves what we're going to learn, or what we might have already learned, some of you in chapter eight, which is differentiation. And to solve it using that method. Well, we know that this, this, this graph, this straight line, if you think about it, has a gradient of 2. y equals mx plus c. The gradient of this curve, or this line, is 2. So the gradient of the tangent, okay, where this is a tangent to the curve, they share the same gradient. So the tangent of this line, okay, um, the, the gradient of this line, this tangent, at the point where it touches the curve, the curve will have the same gradient at that point. Okay, so we need to find 
okay, where the gradient dy dx is equal to 2. Okay, and then that will help us, um, you know, solve the problem. So we can find what dy dx is. So dy dx is 2x minus 4. All right, so we can find um, what dy dx is. Um, we know that dy dx has to be equal to 2. If you differentiate that, you get 2x minus 4. And we want to find the point where the curve um, has a gradient of 2. Okay, so we can equate these. 2x minus 2 equals 2. So 2x equals negative 6, 2 plus, or positive 6, sorry, 2 plus 4. So x is equal to 3. So when x equals 3, when x equals 3, then um, this gradient, this curve has a gradient of um, 2. So when x equals 3, okay, we want to find what k is. That line will have that same coordinate, okay, because that's where, um, you know, this, this, this graph touches the curve. The graph touches the curve at the point where it has a gradient of 2. So when x equals 3 is when the curve has a gradient of 3. So we want to find what y is when x equals 3. So you have y equals 2 times 3 plus c okay so we know that the gradient is equal to 2 so we can say that y is equal to 6 plus c okay um so what we can do here is we can find what y is when x equals 3 okay and that will give us what our k is so the k is actually c here okay so we can say 2 2 times 3 plus k that gives you 6 plus k so how can i find that k now I need to find the y coordinate of that point. So how do I find the y coordinate of that point? Well, when x equals 3, we know y is equal to 3 squared minus 4 times 3 plus 2. So y is equal to 9 minus 12 plus 2. y is equal to, that's 9 minus 12, which is negative 3 plus 2, which is minus 1. So the point where the gradient of the curve is equal to 2, okay? So at this point, the gradient is equal to 2 of the curve and the line. So we can say that, the y coordinate is going to be minus 1. So minus 1 equals 6 plus k. Therefore, k is equal to minus 1. Take away 6, which is minus 7. So we get the same answer in either way. So in this method, we, we find the place where the curve has the same gradient of that line, which is the tangent to the curve. And we can see from that line, the gradient is equal to 2. y equals mx plus c. So we find the gradient function for the curve. Equate that to 2, find the x value where the gradient is 2, and find the y value for that same x value on that curve. That gives you the coordinates of the point on the curve where the gradient is equal to 2. And then you substitute that x and y value into this equation of the straight line because that point of, of obviously will be the same point on the curve and the line. It will be that point. That's the point that they share. As we just said, 3 minus 1. That point is where the, cur the, the curve and the line will both pass through that point. So if, if, the cur if the line passes through that point, then it satisfies the equation. Okay, then that point satisfies the equation of the curve. So you replace the y with minus 1 and the x with 3, and you find out what the value of k is. Okay, so those are two alternative methods of solving this problem. Okay, both of them are perfectly fine. As I said, the first method, um, you can, you know, if you haven't done differentiation yet, that's the way to, to do it. If you've done both of these topics, then either or whichever way you find um, simpler, you, you're, of course, free to use. So that was a question that was requested by one of my students. I hope that was clear. Other questions from this particular endotopic worksheet can be found in the playlist in this. Or uh, first of all, uh, other questions from the Solomon G paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this area. Other questions from this endotopic worksheet and in this area, and other questions from the topic of equations and inequalities from P1 in this area over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link in the middle. Thank you for watching. See you soon.